Happy Thanksgiving to strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world. I wanted to jump on tonight, Thanksgiving night. Well, tomorrow by the time I post this, it'll be the day after Thanksgiving, but happy Thanksgiving to you anyway. I wanted to talk about Brian Shaw's big announcements for today. Ciao, homie. Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. Hey, and he had a bunch of them on this live stream uh, on YouTube today, but my first kind of observation is he seemed a little giggly, isn't the right word, distracted, out of sorts a little bit. Um, I think <laughs> it's maybe getting to him that he shaved his face and a lot of people noticed, or maybe he mentioned that he just finished working out. Maybe he was still amped up from that and couldn't kind of uh, be doing a composed interview or what have you. I don't know what it was, but he seemed a little bit distracted and he was missing a lot of the details that he wanted to communicate. But thankfully, his wife Carrie was there to uh, keep the order and remind him of everything he should be mentioning. So it ended up being a coherent message. So, what did he talk about? Well, one, of course, he promoted his Black Friday event, which a lot of strength athletes are doing. Um, two, I think he had a giveaway. And then three, he kind of went into the Shaw Classic and reiterated for folks who aren't aware of what's happening, kind of the setup, the fact that he's putting up the prize money but won't take any of it if he wins, which is awesome. Um, he's worked out... Uh, cooperation with World's Strongest Man kind of event planning personnel to help get some of the international athletes over to still compete. So, you know, he's working with a group of people who have done this many times before to hopefully make it go smoothly. And um, then he talked about the, the lineup, right? And so the lineup has changed a couple of times. And I want to jump back to my trusty spreadsheet or what is now a family of spreadsheets that all of you have seen in many, many videos. And I uh, kind of want to go through a detailed analysis of who's competing, how that compares to who just competed in World's Strongest Man, and how they did there, so we can get a good idea of how they may do here only a few weeks later, right? Like, you don't expect somebody who was really good in a log press to suddenly be terrible a few weeks later. Um, especially given that Brian and Kerry mentioned that although Colorado is at altitude, and that is where they will be uh, competing, uh, everybody's going to have an oxygen tank provided, so it should be a level playing field in that respect. I don't expect that Brian's going to destroy everybody because he lives at that altitude. So first, let's take a look at the finishers for World's Strongest Man. So in World's Strongest Man 2020 that recently completed, of course, Alexei Novikov famously won that with his incredible uh, record-breaking World's Strongest Man deadlift, 18-inch uh, deadlift. Uh, Tom Stoltman came in second. J.F. Caron was third, so that was your podium. Then you had Jerry Pritchett in fourth. Brian Shaw came in fifth, which to mo many was a disappointment. Um, Adam Bishop, six. Kevin Ferris, seven. Ivar Smock Stellis, eight. Luke Richardson, nine. And Graham Hicks, who had to withdraw at the beginning of the finals, came in tenth place. And so now we want to talk about which of those guys are expected to compete in the Shaw Classic and therefore how I think they'll do against each other. And of course, we have to take some leaps of faith because some of these events are things that they didn't have to do. Uh, some of them didn't make it out of the qualifiers and then the event was in the final, so they never did it. So we'll have to kind of do our best with the analysis there. So in the Shaw Classic, we have J.F. Carone, Jerry Pritchett, Terry Hollins, of course, Brian himself, since this is happening at his primary home on day one, and then at his secondary mountain home in his mountain gym on day two. Uh, I don't know if there's a rest day in between that. I'm not sure. Uh, Big Z, Zajuna Zaviskas, has been invited, so that's going to be, even though he's retired, freaking awesome to see him perform. Adam Bishop will be there, so he was in World's Strongest Man, of course, along with JF and Jerry and Terry Hollins. Uh, Robert Oberst, who I heard had gotten injured at World's Strongest Man, and I had counted out of my predictions here. I'm here. Brian said today on his live feed that Robert Oberst is coming. He's he's competing, and um, I reached out to Robert on Instagram and haven't heard back yet. 
but it seems like there's no kind of Robert hasn't gone out and said I'm I'm out or having surgery like Evan Singleton for example did so I think we're assuming his injury wasn't bad enough to keep him out of this and he's going to compete uh, Maxime Boudreau, who was in World's Strongest Man, but did not make it to the finals. He will be competing in the Shaw Classic. And then we had a few injuries. So Mateusz Kieliszkowski was supposed to compete. And of course, he has that tricep injury, uh, which I think is keeping Rob Kearney out for eight months. So I would assume, even though I haven't heard specifically, that Kieliszkowski would be out for around the same time period. And of course, the aforementioned Rob Kearney is out also with a tricep injury. So... I had heard, uh, if we jump back to my web browser here, I had heard that Evan Singleton posted back in on October 16th, I believe it was, right here, where he's thanking Brian Shaw so much for the opportunity that he was selected to go to the Shaw Classic. So I would imagine that was to take the place of either Kieliszkowski or Kearney. So now, unfortunately, Evan tore his bicep tendon at World's Strongest Man 2020, giving him an early exit there. And of course, he is on um, a six-month recuperation period now, as I mentioned in my most recent video on T-Rex. So go check that out, because that was a great one as well. And uh, so he's out. So he had to be replaced. And then, um, of course, Rob Kearney still has to be replaced. And I had heard, although I can't find Instagram evidence of it, but I had heard from Brian today on his live feed that Graham Hicks had been invited. So I guess he must have been one of the replacements as well. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, I would imagine that um, Graham Hicks was a replacement for either Kearney or Kieliszkowski, and then Singleton was a replacement for the other of those two. And so now Hicks and Singleton are both also out. So injuries really prevalent with these guys this year um, could be a testament to the events being chosen and the dangers uh, therein. So that's why Alexei Novikov was invited and also the other surprise Luke Stoltman was invited. Um, Brian did mention that Tom Stoltman was invited as well and declined and I did see on the Stoltman Brothers channel that I believe that's because Tom wants to focus his preparation for Britain's World's Strongest Man, which I think is coming up, um, surprisingly to me, I think it's January already, so pretty soon. So I think that's why he uh, he declined, because he, he wants to win that, obviously. And so uh, that would have put it at 11 competitors, so I imagine that Novikov was kind of the last minute, right? Because Brian would probably invite the Stolman brothers together. So when Tom said no, Brian probably reached out to Alexi after that. And kudos to him for doing that. Like, he's reaching out to the guy who just beat him out in World's Strongest Man. Brian's a class act, always has been, always will be. And just for putting this thing together, it, he's an incredible class act. Um, the other thing I should mention, how do you watch the Shaw Classic? So, Brian mentioned uh, the only way to watch the Shaw Classic is to join his uh, elite club. So it's club.shawstrength.com. And I think, I, I don't think it's a money grab. I think he's been really cool about it, actually. He mentioned that uh, you join for one month and then you're free to, to unjoin. What's that? <laughs> Cancel. Thank you. You're a... Uh, uh, free. There you go. So one month is eight ninety nine, and that entitles you to watch the Shaw Classic and all the other stuff that you would normally get with this club. And uh, then after that month, if you don't like the club, you can just cancel it. So it would have cost you eight ninety nine. I've paid like seventy five dollars for boxing pay per views before. Eight ninety nine is a no brainer. Like to watch this kind of event with this caliber of athletes, um, a retired living legend who is considered the goat by many and then like the re most of the rest of the uh, competitors who were just in world strongest man a lot of them in the finals so for me 899 is no brainer i'm definitely gonna do it so that out of the way let's get on to the predictions well um let's see we'll scroll down a bit and so We have first a log press. Actually, I'm trying to hide my final there, but forget that. If you see it, you see it, right? You're going to see it at the end anyway. Um, <laughs> no, no trying to drag you along to the end of the video. We don't do that here. So basically, what are the events? So let's do that. So there's a max log press. He, uh, it, It's basically logs until you can't lift any heavier, and that guy wins. 
there's a super yoke that would be, and these weights, Brian said, are approximate, right? So don't take them, take these as uh, set in stone. Approximately 1,100 pounds super yoke. That's approximately what was used at World's Strongest Man, although I'm going to assume Brian's will be well balanced, unlike three mode three of anything is not balanced when there's four sides yeah i hope you saw that video i made as well like how are three motorcycles balanced and i think jf caron on his interview with big laws made the same argument um then there'll be a farmer's medley so it's three lengths of the course there'll be two sets of farmers uh so uh, a farmer in each hand you go one length you come back another length and then you pick up one solid frame um you know uh, that's a one piece frame then there's a max tire, a max Hummer tire deadlift. So I'm assuming this is much like the 18 inch deadlift that we just saw Novikov win at World's Strongest Man. Um, in that Hummer tires are really much taller than 45 pound plates, so the bar is likely far off up off the ground. So it's probably similar to an 18 inch deadlift. Next, the circus dumbbell for reps. So it would be around a 250 pound dumbbell for reps. And um, then Atlas Stones would be the last event. Six to eight stones. So, you know, quite a few stones there. And then Brian was thinking a maximum of around 440 to 460 pounds for that last stone. Uh, the other thing I should mention is he's having, I think it's Slater Logs, like specially create this log for his event. So it should be like a beautiful log. And then he also mentioned that Rogue Fitness heard about this event and jumped in and said hey like we want to provide a bunch of the equipment for you so that it all matches you have matching yokes and you know it looks really professional they really love the idea of this event he was putting on so that should be really cool like this is really shaping up to be a real deal strongman professional event rather than a like let me do a goodwill gesture kind of thing uh, which is you know great in and of itself but the production value should be awesome and just the fact that we're going to be able to watch it live on like world's strongest man is uh, a plus and a perk right there in and of itself all right so let's get on to the predictions uh log press going by what happened in world's strongest man if we go to the finals of world's strongest man and look at the log ladder tom stoltman won it but he's not competing Jerry Pritchett was second. Novikov was third. Ivars is not competing. Kevin Ferris is not competing. And so this is just to show you, I won't, if I walk through each one of these numbers with you, we'll be here for an hour. But uh, I'm trying to show you the methodology that I use. So I tried to take guys who just did this event against each other very, very recently. And then, of course, you know, if we looked at the qualifiers, we can see. Here is qualifier day two. There was a log lift that some guys did there as well. So Jerry did it. Uh, Robert Oberst did it. And they both did exceptionally close to each other there. Um, Carone did it, but he only did the one rep he needed to advance. So a little tough there. So I try to piece together all these things into a story. And the story that, that it tells me is that Jerry Pritchett's going to win the log press. Um and so then I have Robert Obers coming in second. This is really, again, touchy and contingent on the fact that he's fully healed. So let me just say this. Every placing I'm choosing for Robert Obers here is contingent on the fact that he's fully healed, um, which I don't know if, if he is or if he isn't. I, I haven't been able to get an answer on that. Uh, and if I do, hey, I'll have to make an update to this video. I have Luke Stoltman coming in uh, third for eight points there. So Luke is really a renowned recently log presser, and I think he'll show that here. Uh, in fact, people were surprised at how well his brother did instead of him at World's Strongest Man. Uh, then I have Novikov coming in with seven points after that. Uh, then I have... So this is tough, too, because Big Z is, is retired and not as active as... I mean, not retired totally. He, do, he just doesn't do, like, big international shows anymore. Uh... He's retired from World's Strongest Man, we'll say that. So it's hard to figure out how well he'll do, but I know that he still works out. I know he still talked about trying to break his own log press record. So I'm trying to give him the benefit of his um, his legacy in a lot of these events and not make him last just because he's not as active as some of these other guys. So um, 
if I'm way off, I'm way off, but this is what I chose. So six points for him. And then uh, Brian Shaw, I have coming in five points. Again, going by how he did in the World's Strongest Man log press recently. Uh, four points for Maxime Boudreaux. Three for Adam Bishop. Two for J.F. Caron, who didn't do well in either of the log press events. One on purpose, admittedly, but he didn't do well in the log ladder. And then I have Terry Hollins coming in uh, last with one point. Moving on to Super Yoke. Um, Adam Bishop won it in World's Strongest Man, and there's no reason to think he won't again. So Adam Bishop, 10 points. Novikov, 9 points. Jerry Pritchett will come in third with 8. I uh, have J.F. Caron, fourth and 7 points. Fifth place, Terry Hollins with 6. Um, Ter- Terry did really well at World's Strongest Man. He didn't make it to the finals, but... To be honest, part of that is because he and Brian had a deadlift agreement to uh, to tie, and if Terry did as well as he could have, things might have gone a little differently. Uh, he seemed like he stopped in the small clip I saw. He seemed like he stopped before he was uh, done. So, six points for Terry, five for Robert Oberst, four for Brian. Again, Brian's renowned for super yoke, but he didn't do well with the medley with the super yoke and world strongest man. So. I'm going to stop uh, giving him points and kind of the benefit of the doubt based on what he's done in the past, like in the distant past, and go by what he's done in the very recent past. You know, even if he's just missing by a second or two, he's missing by a second or two, and and that's enough to lose, you know. So four points for Brian, Uh, three for Big Z. Again, like Z might be really powerful in the yoke still. I don't know. I just I, uh, I could be way off here. Two for Luke Stoltman, and I have uh, Maxime coming in last with one. And, like, as I go through these, I think I may be, like, selling Maxime pretty short on some of these, but these are all great competitors, so maybe yes, maybe no. Farmer's Walk, I have Novikov coming in first because he did an exceptional time in World's Strongest Man in the Farmers, uh, so hit 10 points for him. Jerry Pritchett uh, will come in second with nine. Terry Hollins will come in third with eight. Again, these are all guys that did really well, farmers in the world's strongest man. I gave seven points to JF, six to Big Z, and then I gave five points to Maxime here. Uh, I think he's he's built a little more for the speedy events. Uh, I gave four points to Brian Shaw, three to Robert Oberst. He's um, strong, but I don't know how fast he is. <laughs> Uh, then I gave two points to Adam Bishop and Luke Stoltman I have coming in last in this event. Again, maybe I'm crazy, but it, it's hard to pick because these are all great competitors. It's really hard to pick some of these. Be- like you say they're last, but everybody above them is just slightly better. Um, you know, so deadlift. I have Novikov winning because I think it's a really similar 18 inch deadlift event to what he already just won recently won so i i don't see a way to not predict him to win this and uh similarly i don't see a way to not predict jerry pritchett jf corona and adam bishop tying tying for the second highest weight uh right underneath him so a three-way tie of second place i believe gets you eight points each uh then i have big z coming in right after that uh with six then Terry Hollins with five, and then Brian Shaw with four, and I think I just explained why that is. In the World's Strongest Man, I heard uh, rumors, I think it was on Martin's channel, among others, that uh, there was kind of a secret agreement between Brian and Terry that they would tie on the deadlift, so, you know, probably so as not to tire themselves out for the final and whatnot, and uh, Brian went first and did six, six reps, Terry went second, and being a man of his word, did six, and he looked like he had more in him, but he stopped. So I think that this time around, Terry will out deadlift Brian. Three points will go to Maxime Boudreau, two will go to Luke Stoltman, and one to Robert Oberst, who is notorious for not being good at the deadlift, even though he's very good at the squat. Okay, uh, Circus Dumbbell, I think this is the first event Brian will win. Um, he did exceptional with this in World's Strongest Man, and he will win the Circus Dumbbell. Alexi will come in second. Jerry Pritchett will come in third. 
Then uh, seven points to Luke Stoltman. I think his uh, log pressing power will translate over here. Um, and then I have six points going to Big Z, who I think still has something in him. Five to Robert Oberst. Four to Maxime. JF Caron, three. Two points to Adam Bishop. And one to Terry Hollins, who is... Uh, who I've heard talk recently on his YouTube channel about overhead pressing being, you know, not his greatest strength, let's say. Then moving on to the Atlas Stones, I think Brian Shaw takes his second straight event win here and wins the Atlas Stones as well. Uh, and again, that's because Tom's not here. Uh, if he were, Brian would come in second, just like he did at World's Strongest Man. Those are the two big dogs for Atlas Stones. Uh... I think J.F. Caron will get ninth, uh, nine, nine points in Atlas Stones, come in second. Novikov will come in third for eight points. Seven to Big Z. Six to Terry Hollins. Five to Luke Stoltman. Four points to Jerry Pritchett, and I'm going by his World's Strongest Man performance. I heard a small interview with him, a short interview, where he talked about just not having enough left in him uh, at the Atlas Stones, and it's it's the last event here again. So I don't think he would have been able to build up a bunch of endurance, especially going up to altitude in two weeks to change that uh, course of events there. So four points there. Although, like, I'm super rooting for Jerry. Like, if I had to... I like all these guys, but, like, I think I like Jerry the best. Like, I just, I root super hard for Jerry Pritchett. I think he's awesome. Uh, three points going to Maxime Boudreau. Two to Adam Bishop. And one to Robert Oberst. Um, I don't know. He's tall and has really long arms. I may be crazy on that one, but maybe by the time I got to the Atlas Stone prediction, it started hitting me that, like, he, he may still have a little bit of an injury and I've probably given him too much of the benefit of the doubt on especially the log press like if he has a bicep injury he's not going to get second place on the log press but we'll see so um, how do those totals come out these are the totals so 53 points 47 37 36 34 tie for 27 25 24 and 20 and uh, i already had the names arranged in the order of the winners uh so i wouldn't have to do it on the fly in front of you here and so i have alexi winning this one just like he won world's strongest man 2020 which again like i said the changing out of guys threw a wrench in the works of these predictions because i think i had jerry winning this event before i heard alexi was going to be in it and if tom stoltman were in this event Brian wouldn't win the Atlas Stones, and it may have thrown a wrench in some of these other events as well, because Tom came in second in World's Strongest Man, so he probably would have knocked a bunch of these guys off of their placings in a bunch of these events. So, kind of the switching in and out really threw things off. And uh, I so that means I have Jerry Pritchett coming in second. This is supposed to be a silver color. Alexi's supposed to be a gold. And I have Brian Shaw, bronze, coming in, placing the podium, making third. Uh, wishful thinking? I don't know. I said Brian was going to win World's Strongest Man, and even going into the finals, I think I still had him on the podium. Um, so, you know, you could say, hey, my block Strongest Man, you never learn your lesson, do you? We'll see. It's, it's his home, right? He should be more comfortable. And besides that, I didn't even factor that into the equation that, like, he should win these things easier because it's his... Um, you know, like Thor had the deadlift in his home gym and that was a whole big deal. Like, this is Brian's home gym. So you could say, you know, and, and you know, I'm one of Thor's detractors in that scenario. And for that same reason, I should be a Brian Shaw detractor in this scenario. But I didn't even bring that into the equation here. I just think guys are better than him at some of these events at this point in time, uh, given his... Um, the length of his career, his focus in different areas, and, you know, all of the things that contributed to his finish at World's Strongest Man. Not to mention, like, he's doing this to help the other guys. Like, yes, he wants to win, but, like, there isn't a motivation, at least monetarily, because he's going to give the money to the other guys anyway. He's doing it for them to kind of give back to what they've lost during this year of COVID, right? He's not trying to beat up on them. So, um... This third placing is what I really think he'll do in each of these events, not because I think it's his home gym and he'll do better. So there you go. Novikov, Pritchett, Shaw on the podium. I have JF Carone coming in fourth. 
Um, so he was third. Yeah, he was third in World's Strongest Man. I have him doing one worse. Uh, Pritchett was fourth in World's Strongest Man. I have him coming up to second here, uh, which is what I had predicted Pritchett would do in World's Strongest Man, ironically. I have Big Z coming in fifth place, Adam Bishop sixth, tied with Terry Hollins, uh, so there would be no seventh place. Luke Stoltman, eighth. Oberst, nine, and Boudreaux, ten. So... Let me know in the comments below if you think I'm out of my mind or if you think going through all the numbers in this way, they make sense. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys and i uh, love to interact with you on the comments. So let me know in the comments below and if uh, any anything unforeseen, anybody else unfortunately gets hurt or whatever, I'll come back on here and I'll do a modified version of this so that we can have the latest predictions going into the Shaw Classic. Uh, see you again next time and go order it, man. It's cheap. You know, I'm going to go do it. I think it's definitely well worth it. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for joining. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.